you are familiar with this phrase, it's something that is heard a lot, it's in particularly amongst women if you're from the South. So it's intended to be something really low key, like a way to let you know that if you're a woman, you're not supposed to not have, you know, you're not supposed to even be in a position where you don't have money, basically. It's really a way to initiate young girls into being okay with basically selling themselves. Um, and oftentimes we hear this from elders that we look up to. And thank God I had enough sense to know like, okay, there's something deeply wrong for elders to condone this. But I'm sharing this because obviously there's a lot of people that, you know, they, it just didn't register them that this is wrong. Because unfortunately, if you're being guided to do something by elders you would think they have your best intentions at heart but unfortunately a lot of our elders could be so emotionally spiritually wounded or some even bankrupt it's going to require you to figure out where this comes from what, what is the core opposed to dealing with the symptoms and the reason this came to mind for me is because i'm seeing a lot of um hypersexualization of particular black women indigenous women and to the point where we have become so desensitized that we are now demeaning, objectifying ourselves. And if we're wanting to figure out how do we get to this point, we have to really unpack the origins of it. So therefore, when you think about what has happened to our people, it is not separate from what we are experiencing now and what we're seeing now now again anybody is welcome to watch this or listen to this okay however it's important to me that i share things that are affecting our people people that people that are indigenous to this land black people because it's time to shift from that type of mindset when you are growing up and you may have heard that particular phrase, it is coming from a deeply rooted, embedded coping mechanism in the face of trauma. So in some people's family, okay, you may have even come from a lineage where some of your relatives may have been reduced to being a winch, okay? Somebody that was mandated, a part of their job was to be of service sexually in all aspects to the massa. So in doing so, as a way for the mind, because really it's, it's really psychological, and I'm not a clinician or anything, but I'm just speaking from my own spiritual lens okay god has given this word to me and y'all i was given this topic a while ago like maybe a few weeks ago maybe a, a few months actually and i've been really cautious about sharing this because i'm like i don't feel like i'm equipped but if god is calling you to a certain thing like he's calling me to share certain insight on certain things then it's, it's meant to be it's meant for me to go ahead and speak my perspective because obviously god wants certain people to hear this that's going to resonate with my soul with, with with my words so as i mentioned about in a way that the mind deals with traumas and stress if there is a constant barrage of trauma happening in order for somebody to not psychologically or, or spiritually to just break oftentimes you have to adapt to that thing so even though people like to mention oh you know these things happened so many years ago you have to realize that these things still have a a bearing on what it is that we are experiencing now because oftentimes these things that happen to us that were traumatic that caused a lot of pain it is passed down generation to generation and it may be subtle it may not be something where we are condoning outwardly you know to to trade yourself as a resource but it could be like it could be in a form of a joke it could be in a form of just how you deal with children 
okay the 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 young girls that come up you may say certain things you know women other women may say certain things to them to give them that insight or or that type of vantage point as if that is an okay thing to do and this is so relevant right now because as you can see when it comes to mainstream media when it comes to the music industry the entertainment industry as a whole it is an extension of shadow slavery it is an extension of human trafficking and so to parade yourself around you know just completely like barely with anything on this has been indoctrinated into us and programmed into us as if it's something that we should do as a means of survival and actually there is deliverance from residues of slavery there is a deliverance from trauma through your connection with yourself and your your spiritual connection and connection with god first and foremost the reason why this has been something that has plagued our community in particularly so much is because as i mentioned if you, if someone is going through an immense amount of trauma constantly and there is no escape from that said trauma and remember these things happen for hundreds of years and your mind in order to survive in order for your family to survive your children for you to survive more often than not people will begin to accept those traumas and not to blame our foremothers and forefathers because again many of them were just literally trying to survive situations that just were just deplorable just horrible and so if you know that okay this is what these young ladies you know the children the girls that are coming up this is what they're gonna and for some it could have been males too but this is what they're gonna have to succumb to so let me just make it into something funny and you know even at family get-togethers and things you may hear certain phrases like this like oh you know uh, a dry uh, a dry person a wet cat don't match like if you're facing some type of um issue when it comes to money all right or a job or whatever and they'll say it with a smile but this is coming from a place of trauma and so often unfortunately this is how this trauma is passed down and to add insult to injury this type of phrase this type of learned behavior or trauma that's passed on is passed on by the elders in the family okay and this is how we further that generational trauma and then sit back and wonder like oh well why are these girls doing this and that but these this is a type of language this is a type of dialogue that has been told to her and the other aspect of this is that those same elders that will pass this type of trauma down onto you will be quick to run and tell everybody that oh look at what look at what she's doing when they didn't realize that they have been grooming this child this young lady to believe this but again that was a part of their function their function as you know going back the function of a lot of the women within our culture during all those years of slavery was not just to be working in the fields it was to further the trafficking of humans sexual exploitation was was just a part of it it was deeply embedded in the culture and so a part of that is to prepare the young girls coming up to identify with instead of trying to fight back against something that they may have felt that they were not able to fight against and many may have fought against it but the majority of them had to somehow find a way to mentally wrap their minds around that level of depravity so a huge level of cognitive dissonance began to kick in stockholm syndrome where people fell in love with their captors literally where they began to identify with the very thing that represented objectification 
So I'm going to share the scripture which is I'm basing this on. It is Isaiah 58 and 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. So I'm sharing this because if we're going to move past passing down that level of trauma we have to know the source for where it comes from and then take an active measure on changing the way we say things because oftentimes a lot of these children are growing up and hearing this type of, 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 of phrases or jokes what have you but they are being deeply embedded in their mind and some of them honestly aren't jokes that's truly what they have begun to identify with but at the same time the very thing that is literally a noose around our neck that is hanging us that is hurting us okay is the thing that people are wondering like okay why is it that a lot of these girls are out here just selling themselves not having worth or value about themselves and it is because a lot of times they're being told this thing these type of things from women that they should be able to look up to all right oftentimes these women had the same thing happen to them and so that crab in a barrel mentality is is really present so if it happened to me it's gonna happen to you and some of us you, you've heard older women say that and it's very un unfortunate and the truth of the matter is that if you live long enough you will be an elder are you going to be passing down that type of dysfunction to the children that are coming up because to be real, a lot of them resent the fact that no one stood up for them, resent the fact that they experienced those type of abuses or was told those things as a measure of survival. But we've come to the point of understanding that we've already survived, thank God. So now it's time to shift from a survival mindset of feeling as if in order to make it, I got to sell myself. God has called you higher than that. And many of them have succumbed to things that unfortunately it's, it's just it's really bad. It's, it's really unfortunate, but they are so bitter and broken by the experiences they've had. They would rather pass on that pain. They would rather literally pimp you out. They would rather put you on the blade opposed to telling you how to live upright. All right. They feel as if they've experienced these pains, they've experienced being objectified, that you got to go through it too. And that's a lie from the pits of hell. And so in order to help remedy that type of mindset, those type of words that you may have heard, okay, because words are powerful. We're primarily made up of water and water carries memory. So think about all the generations that have come before you that in order for them to survive they had to identify in some aspect with that type of mindset okay to reduce yourself to use yourself as a commodity all these things are not separate from the residue of slavery and so free yourself liberate yourself through acknowledging that you have the ability to shift forward you have the ability to not succumb to the things that unfortunately many of our foremothers and forefathers have succumbed to so let's go ahead and get into i'm going to share some affirmations with you feel free to repeat them after me or just simply listen and i strongly recommend that you listen to this maybe you know if this is something that you're having to overcome Maybe listen to this, you know, on a daily basis for maybe the next 30 days so that it can really reprogram your subconscious mind. All right, so take a deep breath in. Exhale. Today, I choose to be true to me. Today, I do not blame myself for unfortunate childhood experiences or trauma. I choose to create an atmosphere of harmony and safety for myself and my loved ones. 
I am aware that my mind, my body, and my soul is worthy of protection. I love the tranquility and peacefulness surrounded around me in all my actions. I choose to make wise decisions. I am grateful for everything my ancestors have overcome and I move forward in freedom. I replace resentment, anger, and any ill will to anyone. I release the feelings of defeat. I welcome peace and abundance in all forms in my life now. I am released from ancestral traumas, hurt, and shame. I am deeply in love with who I am and who I am becoming. I allow myself to accept positive experiences in my life for me. I deserve and require to be respected and loved. I am so grateful that our Heavenly Father, the Most High, provides for me in each and every way. I am blessed to carry the Divine Mother energy within me, and I value her. I am free from objectification. I am free from residue of slavery. Until next time, I invite you to always pray for righteousness. Stay true and remember our Heavenly Father, God, loves you. Bye.